Russian mercenaries have been accused of grave human rights abuses that, in some cases, experts say could amount to war crimes. CNN has reported extensively on the alleged atrocities committed in Africa. We now bring you another report, this time from Syria, where the horrific torture and murder of a Syrian man in 2017, allegedly at the hands of Russian mercenaries, is now a landmark case. The first ever legal effort to hold Russian Wagner mercenaries accountable. The victim's brother spoke exclusively to CNN about the tragedy that has devastated his family and his dangerous quest for justice. And a warning, the images you're about to see are extremely disturbing. CNN's Joanna Karashe has our report. A series of videos emerged beginning in 2017, revealing one of the most disturbing incidents of the war in Syria. An unarmed man taunted and tortured by four Russian-speaking men in military fatigues. They pin him down, and with a sledgehammer, they repeatedly strike his feet and his hands. The screams of agony drowned out by the sound of nationalist Russian military music and their laughter. Later that year and in 2019, more video clips of the incident surfaced online. They're too graphic to show, too gruesome to even detail. The men take turns dismembering and beheading their victim, whose last words appear to be reciting the Shahada, a declaration of a Muslim's faith typically spoken as a death rite. <laughs> their perverse pleasure evident throughout this ordeal that played out in their makeshift Syrian desert torture chamber. One of the men was identified in a 2019 investigation published by the independent Russian paper Novaya Gazeta as an alleged member of Wagner, the shadowy Russian private military entity with links to the Kremlin that's operated in Syria alongside Russian forces. The victim was identified as Mohammed A, a Syrian army deserter. In 2019, Moscow said the reports, quote, have nothing to do with Russian military operations in Syria and requests by Novaya Gazeta to the country's main investigative body to launch a probe were dismissed. Four years after that grisly killing, rights groups from Russia, France and Syria have filed legal action in Moscow in an attempt to trigger an investigation into the incident. It is the first time anyone has ever tried to hold any member of Wagner accountable for what rights groups say is part of a growing list of alleged atrocities committed by the mercenaries with an expanding global footprint that allows Russia to advance an off-the-books foreign policy. The case was filed on behalf of the victim's brother, who broke his family's silence in an exclusive CNN interview. With the safety of families still inside Syria, Abdullah asked us to conceal his identity. I want the world to hear about my brother's case, so these criminals are held accountable. My brother is gone. He will never come back. Abdullah says Muhammad never took part in the war. To support his young family, he worked as a construction laborer in Lebanon. The last time Abdullah heard from him, Muhammad said he'd been detained by the regime on his way back into Syria and forced to join the military. But he planned to desert. He said, I'm going to leave, but I don't know if I'll be able to get back to you. Take care of my children and my wife. It was as if he knew something was going to happen to him. The family lost contact with Mohammed for months, until this. A man from our hometown sent me a video clip. He said, watch this video, it could be your brother. Of course I recognised my brother from his clothes, his voice, his appearance. He was being tortured by soldiers. At first, Abdullah only got the torture video. And for months, the family held on to the hope that Mohammed may still be alive. His father traveled to Damascus. He searched hospitals and jails for his son. Mohammed's death was only confirmed when the rest of the horrific videos appeared online. Relaxed, smoking cigarettes, they posed for photos before setting his body on fire. When I watched the video, I stayed in a room and I didn't leave the room for three days. I didn't send the video to my parents, and my other brother developed a kind of psychological illness from the video. We have a very heavy burden. I want to try to describe it now, but I can't. I can't express what's going on inside me. 
Abdullah's never heard of Wagner. He just wants his brother's executioners punished. If the criminals who tortured him are arrested, the least they deserve is jail. We will not be like them. We will not demand what happened to my brother happens to them. I just want them to be held accountable, even if this costs me my life. In a war where well-documented atrocities have gone unpunished, Abdullah's quest for justice will not be easy. How does anyone get justice from a faceless, shadowy Russian outfit, unaccountable to anyone, one that officially doesn't even exist? Jumana Karache, CNN. Well, CNN reached out to Russia's investigative committee for comment, but so far there's been no response. Wagner has been unreachable for a number of CNN reports in recent years, including this one.